All right, full disclosure, I've known you, been friendly with you for about five years. A few years ago, trained you in my mixed martial arts cross-training program. But even with that said, there are certain things that have come out in this whole situation that are difficult for me to grasp, for everybody to grasp. So we're going to cover all that. Mm -hmm. But I want to start with October 28th, the day that your teammate Jonathan Martin walked out. Mm -hmm. It's changed several people's lives. It may have changed the culture inside NFL locker rooms. But take me inside that day. What happened that day? The day of the incident, uh, we just uh, we had a tough loss to the Patriots. We were coming back on a short week. We are playing the Bengals the next week. Seemed like a normal day. Um, we're in the lunchroom about 4 o'clock, getting ready to go out to practice, and we decided we were going to pull a prank on Jonathan. We've done this prank many times before. Jonathan's been on, in on this prank when we've done it to other offensive linemen. And basically the prank is we had 12, 13 offensive linemen sitting at the offensive line table. We have our special table in the lunchroom we eat at every day. And there was one seat open at the end of the table. And I told the guys, listen, when J-Mart sits down, we're all going to grab our trays, we're going to go put them away, and we're going to leave him there sitting by himself. And um, like I said, we've done this many times before. So uh, John comes, he sits down. We all get up, we grab our trays, we're, we're, we're taking off, we're all laughing and carrying on. And uh, John grabs his plate of food, chucks it on the floor, runs in the locker room, grabs his keys, and he's gone. We haven't heard from Jonathan Martin, but we have heard from an attorney, David Cornwell, who has been hired to advise the family, where he says Jonathan endured harassment that went far beyond the traditional locker room hazing. And goes on to say, among other things, Jonathan endured a malicious physical attack on him by a teammate in daily vulgar comments. Again, you talked about the traditional locker room hazing. He is claiming it went far beyond that. I can't wrap my head around that because I've been there since day one. And like I said, nothing's normal in a locker room. And traditional hazing, there is nothing malicious done when hazing. There is a lot of incidents that you have had. And you would think if there was somebody who could have noticed and who would say, hey, maybe I could take something too far, it would be you. Correct. I've never, I've never shied away about talking about my past. I've been, uh, I've been a cancer in locker rooms in my past. I have been uh, selfish. I have been, um, I haven't been a good teammate. And from where I started to where I am now is a world of difference. And I've had plenty of bumps along the road. I've made plenty of mistakes. Mistakes I've learned from, mistakes that have changed me, mistakes that have re made me realize I need to get help. I've sought counseling. I've, I've made changes in my personal life. I've, I've, I've done the steps necessary to, to grow, and I understand that I'm not, this isn't final, I'm not perfect, and I'm still growing. And it makes me realize now, it makes me take a look back at my actions and it makes me realize, you know, maybe I need to change my ways again. But during that time, you're always in the middle of it. And after you're saying all the work that you've done, you're in the middle of it once again. Right. You're right smack dab, right back in the middle. And not just in the middle of it, in the middle of whether there's bullying, the N-word. Do you almost feel like you can't get out of your own way? Yes and no. Yeah, every, every time a situation arises, every time I'm faced with adversity, people want to drag me right back in and throw me right back into that old mode, m old mode, mold. I get that. This is a deal where I was a close friend with Jonathan and we're brothers, we're teammates. Um, and th this, this, this kind of caught me off guard, this kind of caught me by surprise. If I would have known that this was hurting John, if John would have, if John, we, we'd spend plenty of time one-on-one -on -one outside of football, if John would have came to me once, or if John, one of our other teammates would have come to me once and said, listen, lay off John. He's had, he's, he's had enough of it. It's, it's been too much. I would have been the first person not only to change myself, but to change people around me. You can ask anybody in the Miami Dolphins locker room who had John Martin's back the absolute most and they'll undoubtedly tell you me. John never showed signs that football was getting to him, um, the, the locker room was getting to him. You're saying you don't know what led to this. Uh, your teammates are saying we don't know. 
His side has clearly said, we do know, mm -hmm. okay? And there's bullying involved. There was a voice message left. I'm gonna read it to you. you. You did leave this voice message. Yes, I did leave this voice message. And it's, hey, what's up, you half and word, piece of black. I saw you on Twitter. You've been training 10 weeks. I want a blank in your mouth. I'm gonna slap your blank mouth. Going to slap your real mother across the face. Laughter. You're still a rookie. I will kill you. You hear that. Going back to that now, do you look at that and say, I left that for Jonathan Martin? When I see that voicemail, when I see those words come up across the screen, uh, I'm embarrassed by it. I'm embarrassed by my actions. But what I want people to know is the way Jonathan and the rest of the offensive line and how our teammates, how we communicate, it's vulgar. It's, it's not right. When the words are put in the context, I understand why a lot of eyebrows get raised, but people don't know how John and I communicate to one another. For instance, the week, a week before this went down, Jonathan Martin texts me on my phone, I will murder your whole effing family. Now, do I think Jonathan Martin was gonna murder my family? Not, not one bit. So he left that voice that text for you. He texted me that. I didn't think he was gonna kill my family. I knew it was coming from a brother. I knew it was coming from a friend. I knew it was coming from a teammate. That just puts in context how we communicate with one another. But there's one thing of saying that. Another thing, with a white man using the N-word. Well, and that's... How do, you, how do you tell America, how do you expect anybody in America to believe you're not a racist? Right, I'm not a racist. And to judge me by that one word is wrong. In no way, shape, or form is it ever acceptable for me to use that word, even if it's friend to friend, on a voicemail. How much in today's locker room is it thrown around by African Americans and white players? Uh, it's thrown around a lot. It's, uh, it's a word that um, I've heard John use a lot. Not saying it's right for when I did it in the voicemail, but there's a lot of colorful wor words thrown around in the locker room that we don't use in everyday life. The fact of the matter remains, though, that that voicemail was left on a private voicemail for my friend, and it was a joke. Right, wrong, or indifferent, because of all this, you've become the face of bullying in America. Somebody thinks of a bully, they think of Richie Incognito. This isn't an issue about bullying. This is an issue of mine and John's relationship where I may, I, I've, I've taken stuff too far and I didn't know it was hurting him. Did Jonathan Martin overreact or Jonathan was hurting that much? I can't sit here and tell you who overreacted, who did what. I can just, I, I can just sit here and be accountable for my actions. And my actions were coming from a place of love. No matter how bad and how vulgar it sounds, um, that's how we communicate, that's how our friendship was, and it, th those are the facts, and that's how, what I'm accountable for. You're telling me there wasn't any signs going into that? You know, um, as the leader, as his best friend on the team, that's what has, has me miffed, how I missed this. And I never saw it. I never saw it coming. There's so many subplots in this. How much has come out where you've looked at it and said, that's not even close? I think the whole thing I've been sitting there saying, that's not even close. It sounds terrible. It sounds, when, when it's on the screen, it sounds like I'm a racist pig. It sounds like I'm a meathead. It sounds a lot of things that it's not. And I wanted to clear the air just by saying I'm a good person. You obviously, you've had a, a very checkered history. Mm -hmm. From way back in college all the way up to recently with the last year with the incident at the golf course. You're sitting up here, you're saying, hey, I'm a good guy. It's, it's difficult for, I think, America to grasp that when all they see are the, the episodes. Right, no question. And if you, go, if you go by just all the knucklehead stuff that I've pulled in the past, done in the past, you're sitting in your home and you're thinking, this guy's a loose cannon, this guy's a terrible person, this guy's a racist, when that couldn't be farther from the truth. If I was a racist and I was bullying John Martin, when the press went in there and asked them questions, that locker room would have said, listen, we, we saw this, we saw that. I'm proud of my guys for having my back and telling the truth, but the fact of the matter is, when John left the team on Monday, we played a game on Thursday. I spoke with John on Friday. But you, I don't, you spoke with him? I, t I texted with him, I, I text message, text messages. I just spoke with him through text message. And he texted me and said, I don't blame you guys. I blame some stuff in the locker room. I blame the culture. I blame, I blame what was going on around me. And when all this stuff got going and swirling and bullying got attached to it and my name got attached to it, I just texted him as a friend and was like, what's up with this man? And he said, it's not coming from me. I haven't said anything to anybody. 
And I'm like, you know, okay. Would these be texts you'd be willing to share? No question. I'll give you, after this interview, I'll give you my phone and we'll walk through all these texts. Okay. And I will show you the framework of a friendship. If Jonathan Martin was sitting right here next to you, what would you say to him? Uh, I think, honestly, I think I'd give him a big hug right now because we've been through so much and I'd just be like, dude, what's going on? Why didn't you come to me? If he were to say, listen, you took it way too far. You hurt me. I, you know, I would, I would just apologize and explain to him exactly what I explained to you. And I apologize to his family that they, 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 they took it as, as malicious, but um, I, never, I, never, I never meant it that way.